folks. Welcome to the, uh, the final installation in the Stumac Violin Build Series. So as you can see, I've got my, my violin finished now. And uh, as promised, I'm going to uh, show you um, a few of the things that I've, uh, that I've learned along the way. And, uh, and, uh, and then I'll play you a few bars. Uh, don't hold that against me. But uh, anyways, I'm pretty happy, all in all, with, uh, with how this violin turned out. Uh, it seems to have a really nice, really nice sound for uh, considering the violin's only about two weeks old. We've been getting to know each other now for a couple of weeks. And uh, it hasn't been what we call played in, in the violin business. Um, the, more, the more a violin is played, uh, the more mellow, deeper, um, uh, the better projection uh, the sound is. So uh, aesthetically, uh, I'm, I'm really quite happy with this one. I just used plain varnish. I didn't do any, I didn't do any uh, dyeing on it. So this has had about six coats of, uh, of varnish, uh, very, very thin coats. And uh, it's got that nice honey, honey golden color with uh, we've got the flamed uh, maple flame back and sides and, and uh, spruce top. I decided to, to pimp it out a little bit more with, uh, with a little fancier fingerboard and, and uh, pegs. And uh, um, the strings that I've got on it are not super quality. I mean, not, not, not really expensive, but not bad. They're about a $70 set of strings. They're, they're a synthetic core with, uh, and they're steel wound. Um, you can do all different kinds of things with strings. Everything from like a $10 set to uh, hundreds of dollars, I guess. Um, one of the things that I did learn about this, or uh, one of the many things, uh, when I when I peeled down the purfling uh, after that was glued in, uh, I used a flat, a small flat chisel, and especially on the spruce, which is very uh, soft, uh, every little gouge and nick uh, showed up, and I was hoping, like I, I sanded it a lot, and I was hoping that the varnish would, would uh, hide those, but alas, it didn't. So if you look really close, you'll see you'll see these little little nicks along the edges. But uh, I probably spent I don't know four hours just rounding the edges on the violin just to get that because everything was uh, machine cut, fairly squarely cut. Um, all in all, yeah, all in all, I'm very happy with it. So I thought that I would uh, uh, try to show you a comparison between this and uh, one of my violins that I call Emmanuel and I've had this one for about 40 years and I know uh, I've known pretty much since day one that it, it has uh, far too much varnish on it so it actually affects the sound <clears throat> it doesn't have quite the projection that it could have um, but I mean it's not a it's not a bad violin so So uh, um, I'm not sure if the uh, the difference in sound quality will will actually carry through on the on the uh, phone that I'm recording on, but I'll try and play a few uh, a few bars from the Green Green Grass of Home and and uh, like I say I apologize for this.
Okay, that's the dragon. And here's Emmanuel. It's, uh, when you're switching from instrument to instrument, especially on these, it's, uh, it's a little tricky um, because the, the bridges aren't all cut the same, the strings aren't always the same, the same uh, distance. At least that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. So anyways, there you have it. I hope you, uh, I hope you have enjoyed the, uh, the journey here as much as I have and uh, uh, learned lots, enjoyed it, had this instrument that uh, I don't know I probably got a little more invested in it than what it's worth but but uh, hey what's uh, what's a hobby for if you can't spend money at it anyways thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the flip side